The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time is largely considered one of the best games ever made. As of late, however, there have been fewer and less reliable ways to play this game officially, thanks to Nintendo's lack of awareness and support for their community. In 2021, the original Nintendo 64 ROM was fully decompiled, allowing for a handful of PC ports of the game to be developed. Of these, Ship of Harkinian is often considered the best way to play Ocarina of Time in the modern day due to its wide variety of features, enhancements and community supports. This video will be an in-depth guide on how to install and set up the Ship of Harkinian PC port, how to install a custom 4K texture pack, as well as an overview of some of its most important features. Timestamps are included below for your convenience, and without further ado, let's get started. First of all, what is Ship of Harkinian? Ship of Harkinian is a fan-made unofficial PC port for The Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time, developed by a team called Harbour Masters. While it is a port of the original N64 version, it comes with a slew of enhancements which make it the best way to play the game on modern hardware. No emulator is needed and it can run perfectly, with zero frame drops on the majority of computers. The port is also fully compatible with custom texture packs and also includes a built-in randomizer which is highly configurable. The port also supports gameplay at resolutions of 4K and 144fps plus as well as an entirely functional free camera. Because this is a PC port, no emulator is required, making it incredibly easy to set up. All you really need to do is install the port and provide your own legally acquired ROM. One important thing to note is when you are very legally acquiring your ROM, you must make sure it is a debug version of the game as this port contains features that make exclusive use of the debug ROM of the game. However, that's most of the important stuff out the way, so let's get right onto the setup process for this port. So the first thing that you'll notice when you come over to the official Ship of Harkinian website is that it says that the download link is actually on their Discord. So clicking on this link will take you straight to their official Discord server, and if you come on over here to the download section, which is under the information tab, you'll see it has all of the latest releases of the PC port. And so all you really need to do is come down to the very latest post, which for this one is the uh, Spock Charlie, which is 7.0.2, and download the uh, installer for your uh, specific operating system. So for me, I'm going to go with Windows, which is right at the top here. And it might say on Discord that this is a potentially dangerous download, blah blah blah, it doesn't matter. Uh, these guys are really trustworthy, this has been downloaded hundreds of times, you've nothing to worry about. So just click continue to download, and that will install onto your PC. So once that's installed onto your PC, just drag it onto your desktop, or wherever you want to put it. I just put it on here because it's easier. And you'll see that it's a zip file, so we're going to extract this with uh, WinRAR, for my case anyway. And that'll take a couple seconds. And when we've got the extracted file over here, you can uh, get rid of this just now. Um, and open this up. This is the actual file here, the soh.exe, uh, Ship of Harkinian, and that is actually us done uh, for the basic setup. So in order to actually um, initiate the launch process, just uh, go ahead and double click on this. And it's going to say no OTR files found, generate one now. Yeah, go ahead. Uh, and no ROMs found, look for one. This is where you're going to provide your ROM. So hit yes and navigate to wherever you keep your ROM. So for me, it's on uh, my desktop and it's down here. Uh, the Legend of Zelda Ocarina of Time. Again, make sure it's a debug. You'll see that this is a GameCube debug version. It needs to be debug. Uh, that, that is very important, otherwise this simply will not work. Um, obviously, I'm not going to tell you how you can get one of these, but uh, you, you can you can Google it. I'm sure some light Googling will tell you how to very legally acquire yourself with one of these. Anyway, just hit open here. And that's going to do some things uh, that you'll see. And that is actually you done. Now, the only thing you really, you really need to do from here on out is just um, actually launch the game and set up your controller and everything. So uh, if we want to hit fill screen here, we'll see that we're in the main menu. And uh, yeah, that's us. We're in the game and we're ready to go. So in order to actually access the main sort of control menu, we're going to hit F1. And that's going to bring out a very small menu for here, for me anyway, because I'm, I'm playing in 4K, so my everything's tiny. But um, I'm going to turn this down slightly. Uh, so go to uh, under settings, we're going to see some things. Uh, first of all, we want to head over to controller and hit controller uh, configuration. And here's where you're going to actually set up your controller. And it's just going to automatically detect whatever controller you have um, uh, turned on. So for me, I have a pro controller just now, and it's just automatically maps all my buttons. Now, obviously, because this is a uh, emulating an N64 controller, the C buttons won't write, what won't work. Uh, sorry, so uh, it's it's set to the 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 right analog stick just now, which I I wouldn't recommend. Um, I would 
remap all of these, these right stick, to the right stick, um, the actual right stick button here. Um, so your your analog stick on your controller should be mapped under the, under um, the right stick option here. So I'm going to go and do that just now, because when we enable the free camera, um, it will actually use our right joystick for the free camera instead of the C buttons. But obviously now we have the C buttons to sort out. So for me, um, I, I don't bother with up. Uh, up is for Navi, so unless you want to listen to Navi, you can set to that whatever you want. But generally you won't need to use that. Um, same with down, I don't use it. Uh, left, I set to um, Y usually, just because it's a button that's not used uh, in the game normally. And right, I set to X. So that's the, uh, the, the normal face buttons on your controller. And you'll see everything else is automatically assigned, so you don't need to worry about that. But uh, that's for the controller. Obviously, you can turn off rumble if you want, down to 0% or up to um, 100%, or just turn it off completely. Um, but that's it for your controller. Uh, next, we want to get rid of this disgusting frame rate because this is unplayable. Uh, so we're going to head over to graphics. And uh, here we have internal resolution. So my, my monitor is 4K, so it's just set it to 4K. I wouldn't mess with this because it can it can cause some inconsistencies, but generally it will just um, it will put the resolution of the game to what your monitor is. So for me that's 4K. Um, MSAA is your anti-aliasing. I would turn that up to two. It will just make the game look a little bit better. You can put up to three or four if you want, but it might start to remove some of the sort of um, the, it'll remove the original sort of feel of the game a wee bit. So I, I would keep that at two. Uh, FPS. Now this is where it gets a bit crazy. So you can completely unlock that and you'll see already the smoothness of the video just gets so much better. Uh, I would personally set this to your monitor refresh rate, so mine is currently 144, so I'll set mine to that, but you can keep it at whatever you want. You can keep it at 30, you can keep it at 60. Um, you will experience no frame drops, basically no matter what hardware you're on, so I would really just put this as high as you want to put it. Uh, because this isn't an, on an emulator, it's much less intensive on your CPU and GPU. Um, so yeah, really, you can just set this to whatever you want. And it's from 1998, like, come on. Who's not going to be able to run that? Um, so yeah, you can even click your match refresh rate, which will just match it to your uh, PC's refresh rate. The jitter fix, I would uh, just set that to keep that at whatever it is just now. Uh, all this really does is fix some of the jittery animations here. Like, the horse can be a little bit spazzy sometimes, but that's about it. Um, uh, V-Sync I would leave off, um, unless you want to put it on. But that's really it for um, the actual enhancements of the game. We're, we're, we're good to go from here. Okay, so next we're actually going to configure some graphical and gameplay enhancements. Uh, so first of all, you'll notice that I'm in full screen. All I did to enable that was uh, come over to Shipwright and hit toggle full screen. So this will uh, normally the game will obviously look like this, uh, but you can come over here and you can also press Alt and Enter to make it a bit quicker. Uh, but that's how you get into full screen. So first of all, we're going to come over to enhancements and we're going to go down to gameplay. So the first thing I would recommend enabling is assignable tunics and boots. This just means that you can uh, assign your, for example, your iron boots or your different tunics to your C buttons. Uh, I'll show you how to do it to your D-pad later as well, so that you have more sort of face options. Um, and this is really helpful for stuff like the water temple, uh, because instead of going into the menu all the time, you can just obviously click it on and off like in the 3DS remake. Wouldn't worry about anything else here. Um, if you come over to time savers, uh, tech speed, I would leave it 3% uh, 3 times, it's usually at 1, but I would boost that to 3 times just to make the game a bit quicker to get through. Skip text, you can uh, hold down with B and it will skip text altogether. Highly recommend that as well. King Zora speed, I would boost up to 5 times just because he's so slow uh, on one, on the original. Uh, he, this, is the, this is before he uh, moves out the way to, get, to let you into Jabba Jabba's belly. It's really slow, it's much slower than it should be, so I would boost that to 5 times. The Goron Forge time. This is to do with the Bogoron Sword side quest. Usually after the quest you have to wait 3 days. You can put it down to 0 days if you want. Uh, I just leave it at 3 days because by then you can skip it with the Sun Song anyway. Vine Ladder Climb Speed I would put to plus 5 just to make you climb ladders and vines faster. Uh, 12 looks a bit goofy. Uh, 5 is like normal speed uh, in my opinion anyway. Uh, so I would leave it at that. Block Pushing Speed. This is to do with dungeons and stuff. Uh, it's quite slow usually, so I tend to put that to 3 just to make it a little bit quicker. Uh, this sort of stuff, it doesn't really matter. I mean, fast chess and stuff you can enable. Um, no, no force navi means navi won't interrupt you every 3 seconds. Uh, or, well, forcibly anyway. Um, and the rest here, I, I'll leave you to sort of um, play around with. Uh, for example, Exit Market at night is quite good actually, because that lets you leave Hyrule Castle Town. 
during the night instead of having to wait for the morning. So next we're actually going to come over to uh, time, uh, sorry, items. So I would also recommend instant put away. It just means that you can put your items away instantly without having to stand and wait for like a second. Just a bit easier to you know configure. Uh, bunny hood effect, you can make it uh, like how it is in Majora's Mask, um, as in the faster run. Uh, I tend to leave that off just because it isn't a feature in the game, so I just don't want it on. But you can if you want. It is quite useful for just walking faster, getting places quicker, especially during the Begoron side quest, the fetch quest. Um, that's really it for the uh, items tab. Uh, difficulty options, this is for if you've just played the game a lot and you want to make it harder. There's tons of options here I'll let you have a look at. Uh, for example, damage multiplier, you can put that up to 128 times if you really want to, which is absolutely ridiculous. You do not, that you probably wouldn't even need it past 16 times, it would, everything would one hit you anyway. Um, but yeah, have a look at that how you want. Uh, I would also recommend, um, I mean, in, in reduced clutter, you can turn on minimal UI if you want. That's just going to hide certain UI elements, um, which it does look quite quite nice actually. Um, but under under uh, rather than that, I wouldn't I wouldn't really enable too much there. Um, next, if we come down to gr uh, graphics, uh, I would but we're going to get on to use alternate assets later. That's for the texture pack. But I would turn on uh, disable LOD and disable draw distance. We are playing a game from 1998 on modern hardware. We don't really need to worry about draw distance and LOD. This will just make it so that far away items appear higher quality and they won't disappear if you walk too far away from them. N64 mode, this is for if some reason you want to play the game like this. This is technically the most authentic way to play it. Uh, 4x3 and 240p resolution. Still keeps it at 144 FPS, but you can put it back down to 20 if you want, but I would honestly not bother with that. You are playing the game on this for a reason. Um, to make it look nice, not to play it, play it like that. But you can if you want, it's up to you. Um, dynamic wallet icon, this will just make it so that the icon of the wallet is like scales as you get bigger wallets. Just a little um, tweak that you can enable. Um, that's all I would really worry about for here. Fixes, if you encounter any bugs during, obviously this is a port of a P of an unofficial uh, P, uh, game. If you encounter any issues, they will be fixable under here most of the time. Uh, I haven't actually encountered anything myself, so I haven't had to enable any of these. The only one I, I slightly had an issue with was the camera drift, but you can, that'll just fix itself by, you know, without you having to do anything. So I wouldn't worry about that. But if you do have any issues in the game, come over to here and I guarantee you, you'll find uh, the solution in here. Um, under restoration, this is more stuff for like, just to make the game a bit easier. Uh, red Ganon blood actually, I would enable, that just makes it so that red, uh, Ganon's blood is red instead of green at the ending of the game, because for some reason they changed it. Um, but other than that, that's all you need to worry about. Auto save, I would turn to new location and any item, because obviously this is a PC port, You may, the game may crash. I haven't crashed at all, I've been playing the whole game and I'm now at the Spirit Temple, it's not crashed whatsoever. So I really wouldn't worry about that. But um, just in case it does, uh, you know, you can put it to no location on any item and that will mean that the game auto saves pretty much all the time. So um, yeah, nothing to worry about there. So the last thing we want to do before we head on to texture packs and cheats and whatnot is come over to customize game controls. So if we hit that and first of all head down to Ocarina controls. If you want to check customize Ocarina controls and play with D-pad, this will make it so that you can play the Ocarina with the D-pad rather than the C buttons. So all your stuff will be mapped to your D-pad. Um, uh, apart from A, so A is for a D, the note D4 because obviously there's five notes and only four buttons on the D-pad. So uh, that'll just make it um, for uh, put that note to uh, A instead of the D-pad. Um, you can also do play with camera stick if you want. I, it's a bit janky. I would keep it to D-pad. Um, under camera controls, check free camera if you want the free camera enabled. Obviously, this is a huge feature, probably the biggest benefit of the entire mod. Uh, sorry, the port. Works like it would in any other game. Down here we have invert camera, Y axis, blah blah blah. I think by default it might be inverted, so you might have to, you know, fig figure that out for yourself. You have sensitivity as well. Camera distance. Don't play around with this because it can look a bit janky depending on how far away the camera is from Link. Um, D-pad controls. Uh, check D-pad as equip items. This will enable the D-pad as uh, extra face buttons, so you can equip anything to your D-pad. Obviously earlier we also. Um, enabled stuff like uh, uh, enable, uh, assignable tunic and um, boots so this will make it so that you can also assign the tunic and boots to your d-pad once again for the water temple really really a big lifesaver 
Uh, but other than that, that's all you need to worry about for down here. So don't worry about mist controls. Uh, mist, that's not really anything you need to worry about. But yeah, these are the most important options potentially in the whole pack. Uh, that's really all you need to worry about for this sort of section, for the enhancement section. You can head over to cheats and play around here. This is mostly if you just want to goof around. Wouldn't recommend any of this stuff for a first time playthrough. Just enjoy the game as it is with a couple of tweaks and you'll be absolutely fine. Um, developer tools. If you come down to save editor, this is quite important actually. So this lets you actually manually configure sort of where you are in the game. So you can edit how much health you have. Uh, you can edit how much magic you have, how much rupees you have, what time of day it is. Um, inventory, you can enable what you have in your inventory. This is all shown on just now because the game hasn't started yet. When the game starts, it'll go back to having nothing, but you can manually configure what you have in your inventory. Flags, I'm not going to cover this too much. This is like what the game thinks you've done. So like, for example, speaking to people, you can check these and the game will think that you've done them if you just want to get to a specific point. Uh, so there's stuff for like, done water temple, done fire temple, so the game thinks you've done certain parts. Um, similarly, if you come over to quest status, you can actually give yourself certain items in dungeons. For example, say you're in the water temple and you just don't like it, uh, and you just want to get to the boss key, you can just give yourself the boss key. Again, I wouldn't recommend it because it kind of takes the fun away from doing the temple, but it's an option. Player, don't touch this. Do not touch this. This is like player position and stuff, so this is all very, like, Complex, I wouldn't, I wouldn't mess around with this whatsoever, it's to do with where Link is positioned in the game. Um, I, I just wouldn't touch it. But you can if you want, if you just want to mess around with the game and try and make it as scuffed as you want. But really, that's all you need to worry about in the config menu. So once you're done with uh, enhancing it how you want, press F1 uh, once it's thinged. And there you go, that's you in full screen and you're ready to go. Now the last thing we're going to do is actually cover a texture pack. So. This is the um, OOT Reloaded, which in my opinion is the best texture pack for this game. Uh, so it's compatible obviously with Ship of Arcanian, which is great. Um, so if you just come over here to the download section, obviously this will be linked below, and click SOH for Ship of Arcanian. You can come down here uh, to the downloads, so you can get 4K or you can get 1080p. Honestly, just go with the 4K. You will be, your, piece, your computer will be able to handle it. Even if you can't play the game in 4K, Having the 4K textures is, 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 is really nice uh, to look at. So I would honestly just go ahead with the uh, the 4K pack. So once you click on that, it's just gonna download. It's gonna, it's gonna say it's gonna take a little while for the 4K one because it's quite a big file. Uh, but once it's downloaded, uh, I'll show you exactly where to put it uh, in the folder. So once your pack is downloaded, just drag it onto your desktop or wherever you want to keep it. And it's gonna be a zip file, so just hit extract. Uh, this might take a little bit longer than the ROM. Uh, just because it's a much bigger file. If you're playing the uh, 1080p version of the pack, it probably won't take that long, but obviously higher resolution means more files. Um, so just give that a couple of minutes. And when this is done, it's actually really easy to enable it. Uh, a lot of emulators make it more difficult than it needs to be <laughs> to uh, turn on texture packs. So we're going to come over to, once it's extracted, we're going to come over to OOT Reloaded. And here it is here. This is the OTR file. Uh, this is the actual texture pack. So we're going to come into our uh, SOH. There's no, there's no like PNGs or anything. There's no dragging files or copy and pasting files. It's one file, uh, a very big file, but that's all you need to worry about. So we come over to mods. All we need to do is drag the OOT reloaded folder, uh, uh, file, sorry, into the mods folder of the um, Ship of Harkinian folder. So once again, you come into your uh, Ship of Harkinian where your SOH.exe is. There's a mods folder, double click on that. And drag it into there and that's you done now when you boot up the game so you'll see it, it still looks like the default game if we come over to enhancements and go to graphics hit use alternate assets it's going to it's going to freeze for a second and there you go hit f1 and that is you good to go that is the pack 100 percent setup and from now on you can just play the game and enjoy it that is obviously look at the all you, you can already tell the menu looks really really good for a, for an unofficial fan made pack the the quality is incredible um and that's obviously you good to go you can now play ocarina of time at 4k 144 fps with a 4k texture pack and a free camera what's there not to love anyway thank you very much for watching today's video if you did enjoy please like and subscribe uh, i might be doing some more sort of emulating uh, and modding sort of coverage later on just because it's what i enjoy uh, to make content wise so uh, definitely stick around but Hope you all enjoy playing Ocarina of Time, especially if it's your first playthrough. I think this is a great way to play the game um, and you'll, you'll, uh, you'll really enjoy it. So yeah, thank you very much for watching and I'll see you all later.